Everyone on the call, thank you for joining us today. My name is Tomislav Golubovic. If uh, you might have come across me over previous years, I used to uh, work for Autodesk until late last year. My background, uh, I left uni in 1994 uh, and I've been doing CAD and drafting ever since. And I originally started off uh, with smaller companies up in Brisbane and it, towards the end of my sort of drafting career, I was with Hawley Parsons, GHD, uh, Oricon, Boeing and, and doing a whole uh, varied uh, sort of project. So I was a civil designer, I used to do piping, uh, structural, electrical, telco, a bit of medical work. Uh, and basically anything that was sort of thrown at me from the from the drafting side of things. So you can see on the screen some of the things that I do and, and have done. So up the top right there, doing a bit of piping modelling, structural detailing, uh, mechanical modelling, and then down the bottom there we've got Navisworks. Uh, so doing animations, timeliner, and then uh, on the right-hand side there we've got a bit of Infoworks, which is something uh, that we will cover today. Now, for uh, anyone wanting to ask questions, feel free. There is a, a, a Q&A uh, window there on your screen. Uh, we will cover the, the questions, though, towards the end, um, and then we can go through each one of those one by one. So today's webinar is all about Civil 3D, but with the, the workflows of Civil 3D, and this will apply to uh, anyone on, on this webinar that has the Autodesk AEC collections. So inside that collection is Civil 3D, but to expand your workflows, we're going to have a look at uh, InfraWorks. So InfraWorks is the sort of conceptual modeler for, for civil and infrastructure projects. Uh, and then we're also going to have a little bit of a look at Revit as well. So Civil 3D is all about sort of the more detailed design. Uh, roads, car parks, uh, and it does come with vehicle tracking. And vehicle tracking is something included in the AEC collections. If you are using vehicle tracking within Civil 3D, it does respect uh, the Civil 3D elements in there, or you can use vehicle tracking on its own inside of just vanilla AutoCAD. As part of that vehicle tracking, it does include roundabouts and, and car parks. So if you are designing the roundabouts, you just click on the vehicle tracking tab and, and you can start uh, modeling in your, your roundabouts according to your own certain uh, standards or con uh, conditions. And also the car parks in there, uh, you, again, just you know whether it's for a shopping center, whether it's just for a, a couple uh, car parks yourself, then you can uh, uh, design them inside Silver 3D using the vehicle tracking tab. Uh, obviously, also, there are surfaces we can uh, import and convert point clouds inside Civil 3D. So if you are using uh, something like a drone or a laser scanner out on a, on a new site, uh, you can bring them in and convert those uh, to, to surfaces and terrain inside Civil 3D. So Civil 3D is, is like I said, the more sort of uh, detailed design portion of your project. Also today, we are going to cover InfraWorks because it is part of the AEC collection and its its sort of role within the whole scheme of the project is sort of more the conceptual design intent for the project. So there, it doesn't get into the, the nitty gritty of, of subsurface components uh, in, in the model, uh, but we can portray the, the design intent that we want for the model. And, and for anyone who, who isn't sort of civil 3D savvy, it's a good way just to get that, that idea across it's very quick in the way that it does the modeling. So if you are using InfraWorks for in front of a client, you can uh, sketch up your, your design intent in front of that client using InfraWorks, and then you can go back to the office and convert those uh, ideas into Civil 3D. So you sort of think about it in regards to you sketching on a piece of paper during a meeting or, or just sort of your, your thoughts with, with other people at a round table, for, for example. So inside InfraWorks, there are roads, uh, so what's called component roads, which we will cover in the, in, in the demo coming up, uh, rail, drainage analysis and storyboarding. So once we do get that 
that idea uh, down into the model, then we can export uh, pictures and movies uh, across there as well. Also part of today is uh, we will cover just a little bit of, of Revit just to demonstrate the capability of Revit to import uh, some of our civil uh, topos uh, coming in from, from BIM 360. So I'm not gonna be covering Revit in regards to sort of the, the main uh, architectural structural tools, but just to demonstrate that we can bring in those surfaces from civil 3D uh, into Revit as well. So Civil 3D in, in regards to sort of the, the civil infrastructure sense, we do have steel, we can do the concrete uh, and utilize Revit in regards to the, the, the design and the modeling of the bridges. And all of this is possible using uh, Autodesk BIM 360 docs. So it is a separate um, subscription to the AEC collections uh, and anyone on, on the call who doesn't have it, uh, again, I would probably uh, talk to your account manager or someone in the sales group at Redstack and ask, ask them for uh, a demonstration and discussion about BIM 360 docs. So the models are hosted uh, up in the cloud using the Autodesk servers, uh, but it does give you the ability to transfer uh, models or, or sort of data as well between different packages and also gives you the ability to host your Revit model or your Infoworks model up in the cloud. You can go out to site or to the client with your iPad, walk around the model, uh, mark it up, assign issues to certain people, cut sections. And then that way you don't, you have that sort of that central source of truth and you, you don't have to worry about throwing uh, models or files on USB drives or worrying about uh, emailing the models out. So they are hosted in one central location and then you can invite people to that uh, BIM 360 project. So what we're gonna cover today is, like I said, we're gonna start off with InfoWorks to get our sort of design intent and then we're gonna bring those models into Civil 3D and we're gonna utilize Revit as well as BIM 360 docs. And the way everything is sort of tied together, we can go from InfraWorks to Civil 3D and then we can bring that data back again. So once we get our, our uh, design intent in InfraWorks, we can uh, detail it up in Civil 3D and bring those changes back. As well as uh, bringing those changes back, we can compare the two sort of proposals inside Civil 3D, uh, so coming in from Civil 3D to InfoWorks, and then we can see what was uh, changed or updated between the two uh, ideas. Civil 3D going into Revit utilizes BIM 360 docs. So the typos, which we will again cover today, so you will see all of that. And then we can bring our Revit models into InfraWorks, and we can also send our InfraWorks bridges into Revit as well. So there you can see we, we do have all of these sort of uh, circular and, and sort of uh, just one click of a button kind of workflows to go in between uh, three of the packages inside the AEC collections, but you need to utilize a subscription to BIM 360 docs to, to let some of these workflows uh, play properly. All right. so. To kick off things, we're gonna go live. So I'm going to fire up uh, InfraWorks. So InfraWorks, as part of the AEC collections, uh, like I said earlier, gives you the ability to, to just sort of conceptualize your ideas um, into, into a 3D model. You can utilize the just the new button here to make a new model, which will have no data or information in it, but a handy feature, and this is this is no extra cost. It is part of the software. It is part of the use, the, the subscription you have, and it's called the Model Builder. And it's inside InfraWorks here that we can generate up to 200 square kilometers of data, uh, basically anywhere in the world. So for for this exercise, uh, I have a model somewhere around uh, Millicent in South Australia. So you can see here, we've got uh, my model, I've got the, the road, I've got some of the, the um, major highways, some of the, the rail lines in there. I can switch to an aerial view just to see where, uh, where I'm, I'm sort of gonna be, be modeling things in here as well. So I can zoom in anywhere, I can capture the, the selection of the, the screen, I can draw a rectangle to define 
uh, where I want to grab the data and, and we can obviously play around with those settings there and it'll tell us that we've got nine square kilometers and we can go up to 200. I can draw a polygon around what I want. Okay, and I can import a shape file as well. So this is handy if you use Civil 3D to define your area, we can export the, the shape file and then import the shape file back in here to define the area so we do get matching models here. The base data comes from OpenStreetMaps, so they offer highway and railway data sets. The buildings come from OpenStreetMaps as well, so if you want to check those out, go to openstreetmaps.org and then you can uh, modify and, and review the data from there as well. The imagery comes from Bing Maps and it is draped over the terrain, which is something we'll have a look at. And the elevation comes from the US uh, 10 meter DEMs. Now, these might be a, a little bit sort of loose, let's call it, in regards to the way the, the elevations and terrain are, but you have to consider that there's sort of a, a good starting point for you to, to sort of start sketching from. Ultimately, if you do get proper survey data, a scan, a point cloud, uh, or importing data from, from other websites, we can get better and, and more accurate uh, uh, terrain uh, and surface uh, elevations. But for, for now, for, the, for just this webinar, and then again for you guys out there just sketching, uh, it's a good starting point. So you don't have to worry about importing data from, from other sources, you can do it straight away. So what you end up doing is giving it a model name and then you click on Create Model. Now for, for time, it does take a little bit of time. I've already got one that I just preloaded before. So this is ultimately what you end up with. So if there were any buildings in here, we'd have buildings loaded up. We've got the roads, we've got the terrain there. You can see if I if I drop down to sort of closer to, to ground, then you can see there's, there's a little bit of a, a, a rise, a little bit of a hill up there. We've got some dips in there. So we do get, again, just some, some basic, um, uh, terrain uh, and imagery in there. There's so in in the scheme of things, you sort of start over here with this orange arrow, then go uh, orange icon, and then go through and do the roads. If you're doing any bridges or um, drainage analysis, so you sort of start from left to right in, in the whole scheme of things. We can import various other data sources. So the 3D models themselves, so they are DAE, uh, DXF, FBX, or OBJ files. We can import uh, civil 3D models, 3D AutoCAD, 3D and 2D uh, objects and overlays. We can Im import the, the Revit file. So as you saw before in my, my little diagram there, we can bring in a Revit model. So the Revit model could be a building, it could be another bridge, it could be a, ha a house, it could be a whole series of houses. So it, it'll be up to you to, to decide what you want to import. If you're working with MicroStation, we can bring in DGN models. If you're working with point clouds, we can bring in a point cloud and convert that point cloud to uh, a surface or terrain in here. And raster files, shape files, or even SketchUp files as well. So if you do have a, a 3D model of, of SketchUp or, or the SketchUp warehouse, we can bring that in. And again, to, to convey your design intent in here. We've got other things like surface layers, so we can we can nominate what is sort of above and underneath uh, other certain layers. We've got the model properties uh, or, or object properties. So as we click on them, then we can see you know all of the values in here of, of what they are. If we make any changes, then we can update things. Most importantly, the model properties themselves. So everything comes in at LL84, but if I wanted to put uh, put it in its proper Australian grid, then we can come through and I can throw in here uh, that it is on a certain Australian grid. If you're working in Argentina or Chile uh, or Georgia, you can see all of the different um, uh, coordinate systems in there as well. So you're not restricted to, to just the, the LL84 that um, uh, InfraWorks will give you. We can also, the road design standards, there's only a couple in there, but again, you have to think of it as just being design intent, but we can go through and change the roads and the curves and everything once we've modeled it in there as well. And if there is a country kit, so there, is, there isn't an official Australian country kit in here, um, but I guess the closest you could probably get to would maybe be the UK, uh, but otherwise you could just use the ASHDO standards in there as well. 
Now, I did mention point clouds, so there are some tools down the bottom here to convert point clouds to terrain, uh, extracting vertical features, so trees and street lights, we can get the software to recognise all of those. We can extract linear features as curbs and, and lane lines, uh, and then get the image locations in there as well. With the, the conceptual tools, we've got roads, buildings, so just to show you quickly, I can throw a, a quick model of a building in there. Now, this building is not exportable out to Revit, but it does give you the, your design intent for that model where, wherever it may sit inside uh, the InfoWorks model. So we also have sun and sky, so I can adjust what date and time of the year and then get an idea on maybe the wind direction and how much cloud cover, and then we can, we can get an idea on, on how the model's gonna look. But really for today is we want to start sort of sketching in some, some design intent for the roads before we get into Civil 3D and have a look at the workflow for that. So they're all controlled through this component roads tab here. So if anyone has been using InfraWorks in the past, they used to be design roads and then they switched it over to, to component roads. We, we've got right of ways, parcels, easements, we can add city furniture and land areas and other, we've got the style palette here as well. So for the style palette for the component roads, we've got a whole bunch of different components that we can ultimately add to our road and build it up as, as a component road. So when I do start my component road command, I can pick what kind of assembly it is. So I've got this four lane divided road with the sloped glass, grass median and an asphalt shoulder and decorations. So I've been tasked possibly with, with creating a bypass from this road down here over to this one up here. So all I need to do is click from one to the other and I'm gonna put a bit of a curve in there. Okay, now you can see InfraWorks will, will throw the, the curve details in there as well. So I'm just gonna start that again just to get a better angle on that. So once I come out over here, then I can get these roads to meet up. So when I double click, okay. Now you'll see InfraWorks has cleaned up that intersection there. Now we can go through and nominate uh, these lane attributes here. So I can say that the left lane is gonna go straight and left and the right lane is gonna go right. We can change that to just right only or straight as well. So when, when you do get into the, the intentions for this intersection, you can go and play with those. And as well over here, so it's done the same here. We can go right or we can go left. But for this intersection here, I just wanna make it a roundabout. So we can switch from the junction type from an intersection to a roundabout and you see that InfoWorks has cleaned that up as well. So we can go through and edit each of the individual attributes. I can graphically adjust uh, the values for this roundabout or I can type in the values as well. Also, if I have a look at this, so there might be that I want to throw uh, convert it and put it put a curve in there as well. So InfraWorks will throw a curve in there and then I can adjust these values and you can see as I stretch it out, the road will, will uh, regenerate itself according to that curve. And I can also look at the profile view of that. So if I just right click and say, show me the profile view and I can lift up the IP here and then the model will regenerate itself. So whatever I do in the profile view, it updates the model. Whatever I do in the model, it updates the profile view. As I can, as I progress, I can say that maybe there's gonna be a 50 meter grading limit on there, and then I can give it some, some different materials. So InfraWorks does come with some, some different materials. So if we go to the land cover, I've got tall grass manicured, square uh, stones or sand. Uh, and then I can shortlist it here. So I've got some field grass in there. So again, visually, it's going to show you uh, what it's going to look like if it had field grass on there. And then lastly, for this design intent, I want to throw a bridge in here. So rather than having to, to mess around here with the bridges command, I can just right click on the road, 
add a structure and throw a bridge so from this part of the curve to over here so there might be um, maybe there's going to be a river running through here maybe there's something going to happen in future there's going to be another road under here so we're going to build uh, the bridge while we're building this road so every project is obviously going to be different um, but we can do what's called a proposal in here so with the proposal uh, that's listed up here at the top of the screen where it says master I can add other proposals just to, to, to do different variations on my design ideas so you can see there that we do have uh, that bridge there as well we can modify the bridge parameters but we've also got uh, the details of uh, the assembly for, for all of these uh, pile, pile caps as well so again quite flexible in what it can do okay so we do have, like I said, the bridge icon here. If I click on the bridge, I can get quantity straight out of that as well. I've got a little bit of analysis tools as well. So we can do line girder analysis um, and we can change them to uh, concrete or we can even change it to a tunnel as well if we need to. But really just for the conceptual part of things, before we jump into Civil 3D, there's my, my design intent there as well. So I'm just going to close this out and then I'm going to close out InfraWorks because when we jump into uh, Civil 3D, we need to, to have the model saved and closed out. So this is where we can now take the, that design intent and then bring it into the design package. So Civil 3D itself um, sits on top of AutoCAD. You get the extra... Um, sort of tools and functionality from within uh, Civil 3D on top of uh, vanilla AutoCAD. So you can still use uh, normal AutoCAD commands, but then you can use the, the tools within Civil 3D to do uh, points, groups, surfaces, alignments, feature lines, and, and other bits and pieces. But we want to bring in that design intent. So I click on the insert tab and uh, just next to the import section is the open InfraWorks model. So we need to because this was on my, my C drive, so I can look up where this model was. So I, I just need to find uh, under Autodesk 360 and then I, I know that it was called Webinar. Now it's gonna throw up an error talking about the coordinate systems, but once once obviously you're doing a proper project, you can proper uh, throw it on into some proper coordinate systems. But again, I'll just leave this as is. The selection area can be the whole model. So keep in mind, if you're gonna be doing 200 square kilometers, it's gonna take you a bit of time. And with this one, we can, if you have a large model, you can pick an area of interest, which will let you generate just a small rectangle or, or selection area of that. Now, because this is a small model, I'm just gonna use the extents. Um, the object settings, I'm going to use the ANZ RMS settings in here. But again, if you've got your own uh, styles, you can uh, select your own. And plus as well, we can determine what we want to bring in. So with the, the selection set, we might say that we don't want to bring in anything that was uh, an existing uh, road or an intersection or an, or an alignment. We can bring in uh, whatever was new or we can say, you know, I, I want to bring in anything that was existing and I don't want to see sort of all, my, all of my design in, intent in there as well. So you do have a little bit of freedom in regards to selecting uh, what you want to see on that model. So there's my terrain surfaces. I don't have any pipes or structures in there, so I haven't put any drainage, but we can do that inside InfraWorks. Any of the planning roads, so these were the existing roads here, the component roads. So I did change some existing roads to be component roads. I've got three intersections to bring in one bridge and one roundabout. So when I go on open model, so it's importing 78 entities and you do have to remember, you do have to be signed in for this as well because what it's going to do, it's going to overlay uh, Bing Maps in there as well. So as part of that, that feature, if you aren't signed in, it's not going to overlay the imagery. And once this, this obviously stops uh, the, the import, I will show you that when it's uh, completed. So you can see for a small model, it's, it's quite quick. And I'll just let it finish. So you can see it's modeling corridors for, for the keen people. You can see down the bottom right, there's a status bar, uh, which does bring it in. And there you can see, we've got my geolocation. I've got map off, I can go map aerial. And I can see graphically, again, the, the aerial map uh, overlaying. So that should be working. I don't know why it's not, but that should uh, be working for you there if you're doing it. So you can see here, 
that it has brought in you can see we've got the roundabout we've got the bridge in there and then we've got the other other roads in there as well so again you don't have to start inside of civil 3 to, to get a lot of this information we can bring it in from infraworks uh, and then that way it'll save you a lot of time and effort as well so now ultimately if we're working with someone with Revit and they say they want to see a copy of this surface, for all the Civil 3D users, there's a collaborate button here. Now this is where you need the subscription to BIM 360. So you will publish a surface. So when we publish a surface, I, I need to save it. Actually what I'll do, I will open one of the other ones that I created earlier because I've already saved this and published it once, it's gonna, it won't take as long. So when I publish the surface, these are the surfaces that it's going to publish and then this is the area where it asks me to, to publish the surfaces to. Okay, so when that's, when that's all said and done, inside your InfraWorks uh, area on BIM 360, it, it creates what's called a, a shared file. So this is a, this is the topo that's come out of Civil 3D and it's published to, to BIM 360. So you can see there, if I switch it to, to 3D, just let that refresh. Okay, so I if, if the, the sort of looking at it through GoTo might not show all the data properly, but you can see there we've got the roundabouts, we've got that new road in there with all the, all the terrain on there. And the reasoning for this is just, uh, again, so we can get our model into um, into Revit if you are sharing uh, your topo with people who are working on Revit. So to show you that, I'm gonna switch to Revit. And then on Revit, and again, you need to be signed into BIM 360 design or docs here. There's a button in under the insert tab called link topography. So when we do link the topography, so I'm just gonna save, and then you get this new dialogue that, that shows you where you are within your uh, BIM 360 docs hub and the project, and then I can attach the file called webinar, and it's at version one, which was done on the 31st of March. So now when we do link it, it is linked from uh, BIM 360 docs. So I'll just let that take a little bit of time to load. But again, reflecting on that uh, workflow that I showed in the presentation, so we can go from InfraWorks, uh, get our design intent for the surfaces, bring it into Civil 3D, model more of, of, of the details and the ideas that we wanted with that, and then bring that into Revit and then let the, the Revit users see, again, maybe the, the surface and, and you know what, where they need to place building pads um, or, or any other you know, ideas for that site or that project. So we, I do get this warning, but again, that'll be something you'll, you'll need to set up in the project. And now ultimately now we, we can see here that, that there's, that's where my road is, and then my bridge is gonna come in here, and then we've got the roundabout in here. But if I was building a new building uh, over in this direction, just change that around. So then in here I can start uh, putting in building pads and, and other, any other surfaces and doing what I need to so I can get an idea uh, again on what my, uh, what my design intent or my design model inside Revit is going to look like in regards to the, the, the real world conditions. Okay, now I'm just gonna fire up InfraWorks again just to show you the, the rounding, uh, the roundabout workflow. So we've gone from InfraWorks into Civil 3D. We've created our, our design model in here of whatever, whatever it is that we needed to do. And then we can bring all of that back into InfraWorks. So I'm just gonna close this off. And I'm gonna close Civil 3D completely. And then with InfraWorks, so I'm just going to load up that other model that I that I had um, done previously with the the new road and the bridges and the roundabout. Now this is our master con uh, our proposal. So up here I can add a new proposal and then import our Civil 3D file. So under the data sources here, the button for importing a Civil 3D model is there. And if I go to my desktop and then select the webinar file. 
So what this will do is bring in the civil 3D file and I'm not gonna go through the, the whole steps. I'm just want to bring up a dialog box that shows you the data that it can bring in. So you can see inside that DWG, we have all of these other data that we have inside of, of civil 3D. So whatever changes uh, you've made to it, we can select all of them or, or none of them. We can just pick one or two or three or whatever it is that you want. And once you click on okay, it will bring it in. And again, we will have uh, a different version of that road or any other terrain or surfaces in there as well. Okay, so that's that's our roundabout workflow. And then looking at it through BIM 360, I just need to get this go-to meeting out of the way. So looking back at the dashboard, so with our InfraWorks model, we've got the InfraWorks model uh, in there. So again, we can take this out to site with an iPad. You can walk around it. We can have a we can do uh, markups. So I can throw a markup on there. So if it's uh, let's say that it's a, a revision cloud, so I can come in here and, and put a, a cloud around that. And I said, you know, please rev revise bridge as per client's request. And then I click on OK. So now that that markup is saved, so I could be doing this out on site and then someone in the office is going to see those markups straight away and they can see who did it, when they did it and on which version and if I had any attachments. So if I did this on my iPad, I could take a photo uh, and then attach that photo to, uh, to that markup there as well. So there are a lot of tools in here, sectioning, uh, measuring. Uh, we can compare models as well. So that's the InfoWorks model. And then what we can also do is I can look at the, the Revit file and I've also got the, the shared topo in there as well. So again, you can host all of these up in the cloud uh, on Auditor servers. So you can uh, work from one office, you can share with someone in another office. So if you're in Melbourne, you can share with someone in Brisbane or Radelaide or, or Perth, Singapore, London. There, there's a whole bunch of, of workflows in there that, that you can uh, utilize. Okay, so that's uh, really it for the sort of the more technical part of the, this presentation. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, so George is asked, in InfraWorks, can you get the program to recognize ANZ country kit from Civil 3D? Uh, no, so the, those country kits are different. Um, you will, you will have to, I guess, you can make your own, I guess. Um, I don't know of anything sort of official coming from, from Autodesk in regards to ANZ. Um, but again, George, if you want to touch base with one of the sales reps at uh, Redstack, uh, and get them to ask me offline, then um, we can we can have a have a bit of a deeper dive of that, and then see if, if there's something that, that can be done, or even talk to Autodesk and see if uh, if there's anything coming up for that. Okay, looks like we only had one question. Has anyone else on the call got any other questions? I guess while we wait for them, uh, what you see on the screen, again, choose the right tools. Don't be afraid of change. That's that's a, a, a big one for me personally. There are a lot of tools in the AEC collections that you can be using for civil and infrastructure design. Um, again, talk to, to someone, talk to your sales, sales rep um, about the AEC collection tools and, and if if you're so inclined, ask them to ask me as well and then we can we can do something on a call uh, or if you need any any templates or settings set up as well, that's something that, that I can look at. Um, linking for other BIM applications. So Tom Hoare has asked that. So in regards to uh, linking other BIM applications, um, we can import other, if, if you're talking BIM applications inside the AEC collections, we can bring in a uh, plant 3D model, we can bring in an advanced steel model, and we can also bring in the InfraWorks model to Navisworks. Now Navisworks 
uh, readers, I, I guess if you want to call it that, are included in um, AutoCAD and Revit. So if, if you wanted to bring in an overall InfraWorks model, I would uh, dump that out as an FBX file, bring it into Navisworks, and then link the Navisworks into either AutoCAD uh, or Revit. And then that way you can sort of see, see your design intent with InfraWorks. Um, but again, InfraWorks is limited in regards to what it can export. It can export an IMX file. So if you are working with something uh, possibly even 12D, I don't know enough on 12D, um, but it can import. Uh, so Tom's just said that we run Revit and ArchiCAD. Uh, again, Tom, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know enough on ArchiCAD on what it can import, but uh, Tom, if you want to talk to your sales rep at, at uh, Redstack, um, then maybe it's something we can take offline and, and have a bit of a deeper dive at. But we can definitely get the surfaces from InfraWorks to Civil 3D to Revit. Um, if you want to bypass Civil 3D, we can get uh, InfraWorks to Navisworks, and then in Revit we can link um, uh, link Navisworks files directly. So again, that way you're not using um, BIM 360 to link the surfaces in, but we can still get an idea on that as well. But again, just talk to the guys at Redstack and maybe ask ask them to ask me as well. Uh, George has asked, not having used InfraWorks, does the geolocation grid data include the newer GDA 2020? Uh, George, that's a good question. And let me just double check. So if everyone's still watching the screen, if we go to the UCS and I type in uh, GDA. I've got a feeling it might have been, because I know for Civil 3D they were talking about including 2020 in there. But George, if you do end up with, with InfraWorks and coming in here and, and having a look down here, there it is there. So it looks like Victoria Grid Australia GDA 2020. Okay, so George, hopefully that answers your question. And hopefully, like I said before, talk to your sales rep at uh, at Redstack. Um, mention that you did look at the webinar and, and that, that I ran it, and and uh, and again ask them uh, to ask ask me as well, and then we can we can uh, maybe do a bit of a deeper dive with with your needs and requirements as well. <laughs> 